Hi everyone and welcome to today's online story time with me, Mrs B. It's lovely to see you all and I hope you've enjoyed the story so far. You might see I've got a slightly different version of the book. This is a special anniversary edition which was um, made. And can you see Charlie there with his golden ticket? And here's Mr Wonka. So whilst you find your chapter, we're going to start from chapter 15 today. I also thought you might like to see another version of this book I've got because I've also read this book in French. Can you see? It's called Charlie et la Chocolaterie. And I thought maybe you could find out what this book's called in another different language if you like. So, chapter 15, The Chocolate Room. An important room this, cried Mr Wonka, taking a bunch of keys from his pocket and slipping one into the keyhole of the door. This is the nerve centre of the whole factory, the heart of the whole business, and so beautiful. I insist upon my rooms being beautiful. I can't abide ugliness in factories. In we go then, but do be careful, my dear children. Don't lose your heads. Don't get overexcited. Keep very calm. Mr Wonka opened the door. Five children and nine grown-ups pushed their ways in. And, oh! What an amazing sight it was that now met their eyes. They were looking down upon a lovely valley. There were green meadows on either side of the valley and along the bottom of it there flowed a great brown river. What is more, there was a tremendous waterfall halfway along the river. A steep cliff over which the water curled and rolled in a solid sheet and then went crashing down into a boiling, churning whirlpool of froth and spray. Below the waterfall, and this was the most astonishing sight of all, a whole mass of enormous glass pipes were dangling down into the river from somewhere high up in the ceiling. They were really enormous, those pipes. There must have been a dozen of them at least, and they were sucking up the brownish muddy water from the river and carrying it away to goodness knows where. And because they were made of glass, you could see the liquid flowing and bubbling along inside them. And above the noise of the waterfall, you could hear the never ending suck, suck, sucking sound of the pipes as they did their work. Graceful trees and bushes were growing along the river banks, weeping willows and alders and tall clumps of rhododendrons with their pink and red and mauve blossoms. In the meadows there were thousands of buttercups. There, cried Mr Wonka, dancing up and down and pointing his gold-topped cane at the great brown river. It's all chocolate, every drop of that River is hot melted chocolate of the finest quality, the very finest quality. There's enough chocolate in there to fill every bathtub in the entire country and all the swimming pools as well. Isn't it terrific? And just look at my pipes. They suck up the chocolate and carry it away to all the other rooms in the factory where it's needed. Thousands of gallons an hour, my dear children, thousands and thousands of gallons. The children and their parents were too flabbergasted to speak. They were staggered. They were dumbfounded. They were bewildered and dazzled. They were completely bowled over by the hugeness of the whole thing. They simply stood and stared. The waterfall is most important, Mr Wonka went on. It mixes the chocolate, it churns it up, it pans it and beats it, it makes it light and frothy. No other factory in the world mixes its chocolate by waterfall, but it's the only way to do it properly, the only way. And do you like my trees, he cried, pointing with his stick, and my lovely bushes? Do you think they look pretty? I told you I hated ugliness, and of course they are all eatable, all made of something different and delicious. And do you like my meadows? Do you like my grass and my buttercups? 
The grass you are standing on, my dear little ones, is made of a new kind of soft, minty sugar that I've just invented. I call it swudge. Try a blade. Please do. It's delectable. Automatically, everybody bent down and picked one, grade, one blade of grass. Everybody, that is, except Augustus Gloop, who took a big handful. And Violet Beauregard, before tasting her blade of grass, took the piece of the world record breaking chewing gum out of her mouth and stuck it carefully behind her ear. Isn't it wonderful, whispered Charlie. Hasn't it got a wonderful taste, Grandpa? I could eat the whole field, said Grandpa Joe, grinning with delight. I could go around on all fours like a cow and eat every blade of grass in the field. Try a buttercup, cried Mr Wonka. They're even nicer. Suddenly, the air was filled with screams of excitement. The screams came from Baruka Salt. She was pointing frantically to the other side of the river. Look, look over there, she screamed. What is it? He's moving. He's walking. It's a little person. It's a little man down there below the waterfall. Everybody stopped picking buttercups and stared across the river. She's right, Grandpa, cried Charlie. It is a little man. Can you see him? I see him, said Grandpa Joe excitedly. And now everybody started shouting at once. There's two of them. My gosh, so there is. There's more than two. There's one, two, three, four, five. What are they doing? Where do they come from? Who are they? Children and parents alike rushed down to the edge of the river to get a closer look. Aren't they fantastic? No higher than my knee. Look at their funny long hair. The tiny men, who were no larger than medium-sized dolls, had stopped what they were doing. And now they were staring back across the river at the visitors. One of them pointed towards the children and then whispered something to the other four and all five of them burst into peals of laughter. But they can't be real people, Charlie said. Of course they're real people, Mr Wonka answered. They're Oompa Loompas. I'd like to see a picture of the Oompa Loompas. They do look funny, don't they? Chapter 16, The Oompa Loompas Umpalumpers, everyone said at once. Umpalumpers, imported direct from Lumpaland, said Mr. Wonka proudly. There's no such place, said Mrs. Salt. Excuse me, dear lady, but Mr. Wonka cried, Mrs. Salt. I am a teacher of geography. Then you'll know all about it, said Mr. Wonka. And oh, what a terrible country it is! Nothing but thick jungles infested by the most dangerous beasts in the world. Hornswogglers and snozwangers and those terrible wicked wangdoodles. A wangdoodle would eat ten umpalumpas for breakfast and come galloping back for a second helping. When I went out there, I found the little umpalumpas living in tree houses. They had to live in trees houses to escape from the wangdoodles and the hornswogglers and the snozwangers and they were living on green caterpillars and the caterpillars tasted revolting and the umpalumpas spent every moment of their days climbing through the treetops looking for other things to mash up with the caterpillars to make them taste better red beetles for instance and eucalyptus leaves and the bark of the bonbon tree, all of them beastly, but not quite so beastly as the caterpillars. Poor little umpalumpas, the one food that they longed for more than any other was the cacao bean, but they couldn't get it. An umpalumpa was lucky if he found three or four cacao beans a year, but oh, how they craved them. They used to dream about cacao beans all night and talk about them all day. You only had to mention the word cacao to an umpa and he would start dribbling at the mouth. 
"The cacao bean," Mr. Wonka continued, "which grows on the cacao tree, happens to be the thing from which all chocolate is made. I myself use billions of cacao beans every week in this factory. And so, my dear children, as soon as I discovered that the Oompa Loompas were crazy about this particular food, I climbed up to their tree house village and poked my head in through the door of the tree house belonging to the leader of the tribe. The poor little fellow, looking thin and starved, was sitting there trying to eat a bowl full of mashed up green caterpillars without being sick. Look here, I said, speaking not in English, of course, but in Oompa Loompa-ish. Look here, if you and all your people will come back to my country and live in my factory, you can have all the cacao beans you want. I've got mountains of them in my storehouses. You can have cacao beans for every meal. You can gorge yourself silly on them. I'll even pay your wages in cacao beans if you wish. You really mean it? asked the Oompa Loompa leader, leaping up from his chair. Of course I mean it, I said. And you can have chocolate as well. Chocolate tastes even better than cacao beans because it's got milk and sugar added. The little man gave a great whoop of joy and threw his bowl of mashed caterpillars right out of the treehouse window. It's a deal, he cried. Come on, let's go. So I shipped them all over here. Every man, every woman and child in the Oompa Loompa tribe. Can you see chart? Can you see Mr Wonka chatting to the leader of the tribe? It was easy. I smuggled them over in large packing cases with holes in them and they all got here safely. They are wonderful workers. They all speak English now. They love dancing and music. They're always making up songs. I expect you will hear a good deal of singing today from time to time. I must warn you though, they are rather mischievous. They like jerks. They still wear the same kind of clothes they wore in the, jun in the jungle. They insist upon that. The men, as you can see for yourselves across the river, wear only deer skins. The women wear leaves and the children wear nothing at all. The women use fresh leaves every day. Daddy! shouted Veruca Salt, the girl who got everything she wanted. Daddy, I want an umpalumpa. I want you to get me an umpalumpa. I want an umpalumpa right away. I want to take it home with me. Go on, Daddy, get me an umpalumpa. Now, now, my pet, her father said to her. We mustn't interrupt Mr. Wonka. But I want an umpalumpa, screamed Veruca. All right, Veruca, all right. But I can't get it for you this second. Please be patient. I'll see you have one before the day is out. Augustus, shouted Mrs. Gloop. Augustus, sweetheart, I don't think you had better do that. Augustus Gloop, as you might have guessed, had quietly sneaked down to the edge of the river and he was now kneeling on the riverbank, scooping hot melted chocolate into his mouth as fast as he could. And that's where our story finishes today. Remember to tune in for the next part tomorrow at the same time. Hope you enjoyed today's story. It's made me want some chocolate. I think I'll go and see what the Easter Bunny brought for me. Remember, we want you all to stay safe, be kind and keep smiling. Bye for now.